Hey, what's up guys, John here. On this channel, I generally talk about aviation, making money online, uh, YouTube, real estate, you know, things of that nature. But right now, I'm reading a lot of stuff that's pretty damn scary. And I'm gonna share some stuff that I'm learning about that nobody is talking about. No one on the mainstream media. And this is why, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like living under the radar right now. I'm planning a lot of different things, got a lot going on, because I see what's happening overseas and I know it's coming to America. It's gonna come here in a huge way. It's gonna hit us over the head. And we're gonna have division in this country that we've never, ever seen before. Right now, you know, left and the right are the you know, people that roll up their sleeve and the people that don't, you know, they, they, they can still kind of communicate in a certain degree. But where this is gonna go is that people aren't gonna be able to travel. They're not gonna be able to go international. You know, their SIM cards might get shot off if they don't do the you know what. Yeah, that's what's happening in Pakistan. It's happening there now. So what they're doing in Pakistan is that if you don't get it, then they're gonna shut off your SIM card and you won't be able to communicate with other people. It sounds nuts, right? But look at this article here from RT. RT, you can look at, you can look at a number of different articles. I'll show you how to find it. You can verify it all yourself. You can just use this right here, then type in what I typed in and feel free to choose any article you want. But this is absolutely insanity. Imagine that, imagine you have an online business. Imagine you need to get a hold of somebody. Imagine an emergency happens, you break your leg, you can't contact somebody because you don't have a cell phone if you don't get it. So they're gonna slowly start cramping down. They're doing it in Pakistan. I saw a video in South Africa at a young school. Kids look like they were maybe 12, 13, 14. They were jumping out of the second and third story windows to get away from people trying to give it to them. So like, it, was, it was nuts. They were screaming and crying. Like, I've never seen anything like that. But then I'm like, okay, well maybe it's just there, you know? That won't come here. But now Biden, Biden is proposing that we aren't gonna be able to travel internationally if we don't get it. We won't be able to travel internationally. So basically they're, they're clamping us down like this. And so I ask myself like, okay, what can I do about it? Really nothing, like I, I can't do anything really about it except plan for what I think is very likely to come. I think that if you're smart now, you might be able to kind of bill out some type of like moat and safety for yourself and your family to protect and provide for you guys. But if you don't, and a lot of people right now are kind of just like denying everything that's happening in the world. If you're one of those people denying the obvious, then when it happens and you're not prepared, then, then what, right? And that, I'm, I've always kind of lived like that. When I was young, a quick story, because this is why I'm like who I am. When I was very young, you know, my parents got divorced and I went from a really, really nice house in the suburbs, a little three bedroom, two bathroom house in the great neighborhood. And I moved in with my dad with no heat, no electricity, no running water. We lived on an air mattress together in the hood. And I saw how fast things can change if you're not prepared. And that's why I'm getting prepared now. I'm really getting prepared. But look at this article here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you this article. I'm gonna blank out certain words for obvious reasons. But you guys can look up the article yourself and read it yourself. But please do me one favor and smash that like button so this video will get shared and educate more people that are asleep as to what's really going on. So please smash that like button. Let's begin. No jab, no phone. Without it, you don't have a way to communicate. It's done. Now, so I asked myself like, okay, right now, most of my money that I make is online. I, whether with course sales, whether it be with YouTube or online, you know, just commerce. That's how I'm making my money. But that's how a lot of people are now, either via Zoom or you know, working from home, all businesses now are based in the digital age. So I, I asked myself, okay, if this is happening in Pakistan, could it happen in Germany? Could it happen in Africa? Could it happen in America, Canada? We see what's happening in Canada. It's a nightmare over there. I asked myself and I really start to think like, I'm not gonna rule it out entirely, but this is what it says. You're gonna have your SIM card blocked. You're gonna have the SIM card blocked. Um, that's what the government says. Uh, Punjab's provincial government is turning to coercive measures to increase the participation in the program after unveiling plans to disable the SIM cards of people who decline to get it. <laughs> you scroll down here. Mobile SIMs of people not getting it may be blocked. It was decided by a cabinet meeting under the chair of Minister for Health, Dr. Yassim Rashid, at Civil Secretariat. The government will open walk-in clinics for over 18 years of age groups. And then 
first line under that, officials later signaled that the plan is moving forward. So that's, that's gonna happen there, that's gonna happen there. A final decision has been taken to block the mobile SIM cards of people not taking it. Punjab specializes in healthcare department spokesman Saeed Hamad Raza told Dawn, a Pakistani daily, citing a senior health department official. The paper said that the Punjab government will seek the help from the Pakistani Telecommunications Authority, PTA, in order to implement the policy. The measure is designed to counter negative propaganda about the jab and ensure that the targets are met, Don reported, citing the officials. The provincial government is aiming to get 40 million residents by November. So we're in June now, July, August, September, October. We're five months away, four and a half, five months away. 40 million people. In addition to the SIM card restrictions, authorities might also ban people from going to parks, to restaurants, to malls. Punjab is the most populous province in Pakistan, containing more than half of the country's total population, as well as the country's second largest city, Lahore. The regional government began its plan in March, but the struggle to drum up enthusiasm for public health initiatives, mobile, you know what, camps are being deployed near religious shrines across the province in an effort to make the you know what more accessible. Governments around the world have adopted a range of measures to promote the efforts, but some policies have been criticized as gimmicky or heavy handed. In the US state of Washington, legal, you know what, re retailers are giving free to those who have taken at least one dose of the you know what. Restrictions have also been used to compel people to get these. In other, some countries, such as Israel, un citizens are barred from entering certain venues. That's happening in New York right now. In Philly, there's a bar that is also uh, requiring it for you to enter. I've heard of gyms in Philly doing the same thing. You know, they're, in New York, they were just, uh, they just had a concert where it was only four people that had it. So if you, don't, if you don't have it, you can't go. I wonder, is Whole Foods gonna do it? I would, I would imagine Whole Foods is kind of in on it and they would 100% require it, but that's pure speculation. We'll see if that happens. Uh, Punjab isn't the only region in Pakistan to take a more extreme approach to the, you know what, in Singh Providence, plans have been announced to stop the salaries of government employees who refuse, stop their salaries, shut down their livelihood, stop them from being able to communicate. And this isn't by force, <laughs> like insanity, crazy. Then look at this article here. This is from Forbes. This was May. Uh, 28th, so last week, Biden admin taking very close look at the new passport for international travel, but still no plans to require, to require the you know what in America. You can't travel overseas. So if you have a business, you have clients or, or your overall, your boss requires for you to travel to go to and from to meet with others, you're going to lose your job. You're gonna lose your job. You might've went to school for eight years, 10 years to get this degree, to be able to have that great job. Now you're gonna lose it. You know, what's interesting though, if you have a private plane, you're able to fly in and out of different airports without having to go through this. So it's mainly just for the 99.9% .9 of people be forced to get it. But top line, the US is considering developing a new passport for international travel. Director of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, said Friday, following other countries in Europe and Asia who are developing ways to provide proof, even as the concept of the new passport remains deeply controversial in the US. Well, yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be the land of the free. How is it not controversial? But I mean, whether you wanna get it or don't wanna get it, that's fine. That's none of my business. I'm not gonna share my opinion about it, you know, but the facts are, this is not, this is not freedom any longer. This is, you know, this is hell that they're trying to force us to live under. This new rule of no power, no control, no freedom of mobility for any citizens seems to be the direction that we are heading in. When asked on Good Morning America whether the US was developing a new passport system for traveling in and out of the US, Mayorkas said the government was taking a very close look at whether it should be implemented. The Homeland Security Chief said the US was focused on making sure that any passport that we provide for the you know what is accessible to all and that no one is defranchised if one is required. 
The new paths were being developed by the European Union and other countries and private groups are so far digitally based, raising concerns that they could potentially disenfranchise groups like those that don't have smartphones. The U.S. does not have any requirements for international travelers to get the UNOWEP at the moment, but does require those traveling into the U.S. to test negative. The Biden admin has already said it will not develop a federal new passport that Americans would be forced to show within the U.S., such as certain businesses or domestic travel. I mean, of course, or unless, you know, maybe there's a new variant or a new issue that comes out that is a risk, and then maybe they're forced to do it at that point. Possibly. We'll see. In a statement to Forbes, a Homeland Security spokesperson said Mayorkas was referring to a passport ensuring that all U.S. travelers will be able to easily meet any anticipated foreign country entry requirements and that the U.S. will have any centralized database or credentials. But look at this. It says here the big number, 71%. That is the percentage of adults in the U.S. who believe a new passport defined as a certificate that would show either that someone has gotten it or tested for it should be required. So they're saying 71% of the population thinks that it should be required. But you gotta see who wrote this and who did the statistics on this. According to the IFOS World Economic Forum poll conducted between March 26th and April 9th, that's slightly below the 78% of total respondents from across 28 countries who backed the new passport requirement for their respective countries. So it seems like everybody wants this thing, huh? This is, this is crazy. This is absolutely insanity. And that's why right now I'm working really hard, making a lot of content, working on my courses, real estate, literally doing everything, like hustling 24 seven right now, uh, get my private pilot license, I'm getting prepared. I'm getting prepared because this is going to come. This is, it seems like, you know, 2020 was a warm up. 2021 is where we start driving in the direction that they want to go. 2022 is going to be the world of problems. So my advice to all of you right now is to work hard, but work very, very smart. Save up as much money as possible, make very smart and strategic moves and get ready because this seems like the direction that we're going. You know, if you want to learn how to make money online, now is the time to learn how to make money online. I mean, while you can. So make money online in real estate, for example, I love real estate investing, but it, it, it's crazy right now. If you look at what's happening, BlackRock, for example, they're federally funded and they're going out there paying 30 to 50% above listing prices on homes. They're literally buying towns. And what's crazy is that they are, they're making more money. For example, Invitation Homes made 25% more money during the pandemic than before the pandemic. And it's because they're getting all this Congress funding, but small mom and pop landlords are bleeding out dry. So this is like the ultimate power grab. This is the grab on our freedoms, on our land, on everything. So get smart and about what's happening here because they're not talking about it. People aren't talking about it, but you know, let's share the content. If you have any friends or family members that are kind of like on the fence, maybe think that you're crazy or, you know, or not on the same page, tell them to do the research, to look into this stuff because I think that with open communication, open dialogue, that we'll be able to, uh, to, be able to uh, achieve more. So share the information and please smash this like button. It really does help the channel a lot. It will share this video. Uh, it'll educate more people that are considering to invest in real estate right now. I mean, I think the stock market, look at Bill Gates, for example. Bill Gates is selling off a ton of stock. Uh, a lot of the billionaires are selling off a ton of stock right now. Why? Why would they do that? Unless maybe they know that a problem is going to come that's going to wreak havoc on the economy and they're able to then reinvest their capital uh, more efficiently. But what are your thoughts about that? Drop it below. Please smash that like button again and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. YouTube success blueprint. If you've enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into growing your YouTube channel and create passive income as a YouTuber, check out my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video. One of the richest men in the world, Warren Buffett once said, opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put on a bucket, not a thimble. I get the feeling that many men and women today are using thimbles instead of buckets. The truth is that we're in a huge wave of opportunity. I'm not suggesting that the current situation hasn't caused any financial damage to people's lives because it certainly has. You may be one of those who have been fired, transferred, demoted, or had his assets repossessed. When looking up my own channel statistics on Social Blade, you can see that I was able to grow from a mere 11,000 subscribers 
to 120,000 subscribers in just 15 months. You could do this too, and I wanna show you how. My YouTube Success Blueprint is a complete A to Z guide that teaches you the necessary steps in order to get your channel up and running within a few days. YouTube is an explosive avenue where you could earn thousands of dollars based simply on uploading videos and monetizing them for views. Think of a bridge with a toll on it. That is a video that's monetized on YouTube. It also serves a great channel to capture leads and potential new clients. Personally, I'm receiving roughly $30,000 per month in video views through Google AdSense just by people watching my videos on YouTube with 120,000 subscribers. This number is likely only going to grow as more and more people become accustomed to using YouTube. We have roughly 2.3 billion monthly users on YouTube, and I could see that number hit 3 billion in no time. To learn more about growing your YouTube channel and creating passive income as a YouTuber, register for my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video.